Hello, my name is Lee Dawson with Quality One, and now we're going to be talking about design FMEA or design failure mode and effects analysis. Now, a design FMEA should be done well in advance of the release of the design. That is to say, before the drawing is released. And it can be done as early as is possible, as long as enough design content is available in order to make the analysis uh, work. Now, there are several things or several reasons why you would do a design FMEA. One of the obvious reasons is to improve the design, so to, to reduce risk of that design causing a problem in terms of performance to a customer. However, what I'd like to talk about now is the links between the design FMEA and other tools within the APQP or Advanced Product Quality Planning Environment or a Lean Manufacturing, Lean Design Environment. The first one I want to talk about is the design FMEA relationship to the process FMEA. Many people ask, why do I need a design FMEA before I do a process FMEA? And the answer really is all about the idea of having design uh, content available at the time of doing the process FMEA. For example, if I already have a drawing finished, the design is completed, a design FMEA is not that important. In fact, all the information necessary to do a process FMEA would already be present on the drawing or the design of the product after it's been released. However, prior to that, prior to a drawing being released, prior to the, en the engineering design release date, the design FMEA is a substitute for that drawing. As a substitute, it provides certain pieces of information that the process manufacturing individuals can use when designing their process to manufacture the product appropriately. The first piece of information that comes from the design FMEA are any special characteristics. Special characteristics come from the cause column of the design FMEA. They must be translated into geometric dimensional information for the process people to be able to use that appropriately in their process FMEA. Another piece of information that comes from the design FMEA along with that particular special characteristic, it includes the effects of failure, the severity rankings for those effects, and the failure mode itself. Each of those pieces of information are dropped into the process FMEA in appropriate columns. By making the link between the design FMEA and process FMEA, the characteristics that come from the design becoming failure modes at the process allows the link between the functional performance of the product and the manufacturing requirement of making the characteristics to blueprint specifications. In addition to that, the process folks now can uh, analyze the reasons why they could make it incorrectly, that is to say the characteristic being made outside of blueprint specifications, and they focus on what we refer to as the six M's, man, method, material, machine, measurement, and mother earth, or as we sometimes call it, environment. <laughs>